Hey guys, so in this video I'm going to explain classical conditioning. It's just a portion of the learning unit and classical conditioning is a specific type of learning where um, a human or an animal learns to do a reflexive response, so something involuntary, and they learn to do that involuntary behavior to something completely neutral. Um, so it would be something that shouldn't, it's an object, um, and it, you sh it shouldn't feel anything toward that object, you shouldn't um, have any like behavior that you do to that object, it's completely neutral. Um, but you have associated something with that object so that now you're performing an involuntary behavior, a reflex like blinking or flinching or sweating. Um, you're doing this behavior you cannot control to this once neutral stimulus. Um, and I think I mentioned this, but it's a type of associative uh, learning where you're associating a reflex um, and you're anticipating an event to happen, and so you're associating that reflex with this um, this stimulus that you, um, you you shouldn't normally pair those together. So let's go forward with this. Um, we are going to start with Pavlov, who isn't a psychologist. Um, Pavlov was actually studying the salivatory glands on dogs, and so he had these little test tubes on the dogs that would collect the saliva as they would salivate, and he noticed something really strange, that the dogs would be salivating before they even got food. And he thought this was really strange because what should happen, and that's an involuntary response, you can't control your saliva, and so he thought it was strange that all of a sudden this involuntary response was happening and they were not getting food. So why were they salivating when they didn't have any food? And so what he was learning was the dogs were anticipating food. And so they would be salivating when they would when he, the dogs would hear him approach or whenever they would see the food dish. Um, and so they were associating those things with food and then they would be salivating before the food came and he thought it was strange and so what he started doing was he would pair other things with food. Um, he would have a metronome click uh, whenever he would give food and he noticed if he did that enough times that he could um, have a metronome clicking back and forth and then they would be salivating before he even gave them food. Um, he figured out you could do this with lights with bells, you just present that neutral stimulus before you give the food enough times that the dog will start to anticipate food is coming and they will salivate an involuntary reflex to this object like a bell um, or the sound of his footsteps before they even get food because they're anticipating the food to come. So that's what Pavlov found out and we call that classical conditioning. You're going to need to be able to take the elements of classical conditioning. You can see up here I have NS, CS, CR, US, or UCS, UCR. I've got those elements there for you. Um, if you already know what those are and you want to pause this and you want to try to identify those different parts of the Pavlov's experiment, you can. I'm going to go through and explain them. Um, but feel free to pause it at any point if you want to go through and try to um, identify what those parts are. So a neutral stimulus is an object. A stimulus is an object. And it is something that you should not have a response to. The neutral stimulus, it's neutral. You should have no response to a neutral stimulus. That would be this pen. I have no involuntary response. I'm not sweating to this pen. I'm not blinking to this pen. I'm not flinching to this pen. Um, I have no, it's a neutral object. I don't feel or do anything to this object. So that's neutral, neutral stimulus. Uh, but in classical conditioning, what happens is you have this neutral stimulus happening right before a stimulus you do have feelings or actions towards. And because it happens right before that object that you do feel or do something to, you anticipate them together. So with Pavlov, um, the neutral stimulus was this, in this situation down here, is a bell. You shouldn't do or feel anything when a bell rings. Um, okay, so the condition stimulus, um, this is, I should actually have them flip-flopped here. Let's start with the unconditioned stimulus over here. Unconditioned means unlearned. It's an object that you don't have to learn anything to. You have an automatic response to it that you, you don't have to learn anything to the unconditioned stimulus. Um, and the unconditioned response, the UCR, that's a response that you don't have to learn. It is unlearned. Unconditioned is unlearned. You don't have to learn that these two come together. They are paired together and you don't have to learn it. This stimulus makes this response 
and you didn't have to learn that those were paired together. So the unconditioned stimulus is the food, and then the unconditioned response is the salivating. You did not have to learn to salivate to food. So this pair together is the one that you did not have to learn that naturally occurs. Naturally, you are unconditioned to food, to salivate, which is the response to food. So the S, the, is the stimulus is always an object, and the R response is always a behavior. So this unconditioned is unlearned. You don't have to learn to salivate to food. You will do that naturally. So we're going to go over to the CS and the CR. The CS stands for conditioned stimulus. This is the object, the stimulus you had to be conditioned to. So this is an object you had to learn something to. The conditioned response is a behavior you had to learn. So this is the pair that you have to learn. So the conditioned stimulus is the object that we have to learn to salivate to. That's the bell. The conditioned response is the response, this new response that we learn to this stimulus, and that's salivating. So the dogs are, the conditioned response is to salivate to the conditioned stimulus, the learned object, the bell. Okay, so you're going to need to be able to identify those. I think of it as UCS and UCR, that means unconditioned or unlearned. That is the pair that it's the object and the response that you don't have to learn a behavior to. You automatically have an involuntary response. Anyone, and, and a dog, a baby, will respond that way whenever you give that stimulus. Anyone will have that response. The conditioned stimulus and the conditioned response are something you have to learn. You have to be conditioned to have that response to that stimulus. Um, the neutral stimulus is always the conditioned stimulus. Um, or at least it almost always is. I'm turning on my light here because my uh, lights went off. Okay, so um, let's go on to the next slide here. Um, you need to be able to identify the other parts. Um, acquisition is the point at which you um, learn the uh, the behavior. The point at which you learn that the bell is signaling the food. So that's when you, acquisition is when you acquire that, when you have learned that pairing. Timing means that the bell needs to be rung a half a second before the food is presented. For the strongest relationship, it needs to happen just before. So that bell needs to be rung just before the food is presented. Um, repetition means that you need to have this pairing happen over and over and over again in order to have a strong relationship. In order for that dog to start salivating to the bell, that they need to repeat that pairing of the bell and the food over and over and over again. Um, the only thing that doesn't need to be repeated multiple times is a food aversion. If you get sick and you get sick to, um, you know, for whatever reason, maybe you get food poisoning or you just are plain sick and you've eaten a food, if you associate that food with a sickness, that only needs to happen one time and you can develop that food aversion. That's the only thing that doesn't need to be repeated multiple times. Or if you've had some kind of trauma, possibly, that's you have a very strong feeling toward um, that object, that won't need to be paired as many times. Um, generalization is where you start to generalize things that are similar in this instance to the bell. So if the dog starts to salivate to uh, maybe a noise that is similar to the bell, but isn't the bell, he's generalizing. Um, when we talk about little Albert, there will be some examples of generalization there too, but it's whenever you produce that response um, to a stimulus that wasn't the condition stimulus, but it's close to it. It is similar in some way. Extinction happens whenever, um, if Pavlov quit pairing that bell with the food, um, the dog would salivate, but if he did that long enough, he just kept doing the bell over, you know, presenting the bell, presenting the bell, presenting the bell, and did not present the food. Eventually, the dog will start to stop the salivating to the bell, and that is extinction. Spontaneous recovery, if Pavlov waits a little while and then rings the bell again, and then the dog starts just salivating, that would be spontaneous recovery. If the dog um, can, you know, has that response again after a time has elapsed. Or if maybe that he pairs the, the bell with the food again and then it, it, it reoccurs and that pairing is made, that would be, it would spontaneously recover if he produces that response after extinction has occurred. Okay, I'm going to stop here and um, I'll do another video on Watson. Watson uh, is going to, to carry on some ideas of classical conditioning and develop the field called behaviorism. So um, watch my next video for John Watson and um, his aspects of learning. Okay, thanks. I hope that's helpful.